Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo, and today we will be talking about the top brand new features that's a part of Samsung One UI 5.0 with Android 13. Now this one is the beta version. This is beta version one, just updated the Galaxy S22 Ultra last night. And today I wanna to share with you the top features, changes, or updates that came with Samsung One UI 5.0. So first off, let's talk about stackable widgets. This is a way that you're able to stack widgets on top of each other that are the same size. So this way you don't have all of these widgets taking up the full entire real estate of your home screen. So for example, let's say that we scroll down and I wanted to go through my clock. So I'm gonna do a alarm because there's a particular alarm that I either turn on or off. I'd rather just interact with it with a widget without having to open up the full application itself. So up on the very top left hand side, you can see the widget. If I do click on that alarm, I can actually turn on the alarm without having to open up the full application. If I was to tap that alarm off, now I'm able to turn it off again without having to open it up. But if you do wanna open up the full app, you just tap on it and there you go. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to press and hold. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. This is basically a four by one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this over into the main part of my home screen. So once it's sitting here, one of the things you're able to do is you can now press and hold and you can add a widget on top. So now I'm gonna go through and let's just go with digital well-being. And what it's gonna show is any application that is able to be stacked that is in the size of four by one, or you can adjust it to that size. So you can see that some of these numbers of some of these widgets have kind of gone down a little bit because it's again, only showing the ones that is able to go as a four by one. So I'm gonna do digital well-being and I'm gonna hit on add. So this is now a way that you're able, again, save the real estate space on your home screens for other applications and folders. So this way you have it all just in one spot. You can swipe between two different widgets. So now that you have both widgets stacked on top of each other, one of the things you are able to do is you can now press and hold. And let's say you wanted to edit the stack. Now, if there's one of these that you would want to move into a different order, you are able to move them into a different order. So this way, this one's always on top. This is the second one. And you also have an option down here you can toggle on if you wanna have an auto rotate of widgets. It's gonna automatically rotate it to show you the most relevant. But for me, I would rather have it in the order of which it was placed. So now this is the first one and this is the second. Now another thing you can do is you can go in and you can add another widget. So let's say that we add in another widget. Let's go to YouTube Music. I'm gonna go with right here YouTube Music itself. So this way I can thumbs down, thumbs up, play, next song, back, and I have all three widgets again all in one spot. Now if you wanted to get rid of this or even change the size, you can change the size and then you can add a different stackable widget if you notice that there's another widget you love to use. Again, it's only gonna be stackable if it's the same size and then when you're not using it you can always just simply remove if you're not somebody who uses stackable widgets but I assume everybody should at least try it out to see what they think to have two or three or four widgets all in one spot all stacked up now next up is a new way of using swipe gestures and this is if you have an application running you can swipe up with two fingers from the bottom and it opens up split screen mode so this way you can have two applications running at the same time you know as you have these things running you are able to tap in the middle you can flip flop the arrangement. You can also hit that favorite if you want to favorite it. And you can even change the size of either the top or the bottom. Or if you wanted to, you can completely close out of one of the applications by going to the top or the bottom. And then also too, one of the things, let's say you wanted to have this one as a pop-up window. So the way you're able to do that is swiping down from either the top left or top right. And once you bring it all the way down, you can change the size. You can also move this around where you want it to go. You can make it smaller, go back to full screen. You can exit out. Here's more options. This is a way uh, if you want to have either the top showing or not showing, if you want it to be a little bit more clean. You also have this one right here. You can open up split screen from right there. So if you go into the, the pop-up window first, you can actually switch it over into split screen. And then this is just talking about the opacity of uh, you know, the application itself in terms of that 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 uh, little pop-up window. So again, you're able to use two different types of gestures that are brand new. And the, the place of where you're able to locate that is by going inside of settings. Once you go inside of settings, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna head over inside of the advanced features. And then inside of advanced features, you go to labs. So inside of labs, this is where you have those two new options, swipe for pop-up view and swipe for split screen. Inside of here, it just kind of shows you what you're able to do and it gives you the explanation, which I've already shown that to you, uh, but this is where you can be able to have that explanation given to you. You can also do it from the side if you're using it in landscape mode. The next feature is one that is very, very helpful, especially if you take screenshots or images and you would like to use it for later purposes. So I just kind of made this little small little uh, folder here. It's called X-Test. So basically this is just 
just an image. This is giving details about the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6a. Down over here on the bottom right hand side is this little text button. This text button allows you to basically highlight anything from this image. It doesn't matter if it's big or if it's small. What you're able to do is you can now press and hold and you can highlight all of this stuff and then you can copy it. So this way you can send it to somebody or put it in a document, whatever you would need. Here's an email. This one actually has a, a website that is linked. If I wanted to, I can press and hold on this link and I can open the link instantly. So it makes it very, very simple and easy if you wanna to go to a website. Here Here's a back of a uh, air conditioning unit. It's a portable air conditioning unit. And maybe you needed to give these guys a call or you needed to grab the SKU and some other information off of it. So if they were asking, you know, what is the SKU of your, you know, uh, your product, you just hit on copy. There is the SKU right there. Or maybe you wanted to head over into, uh, uh, you know, a website or if you want to go into an email. Again, here's another phone number. You just hit on call. So it makes it very simple, again, just to grab anything from an image. It doesn't matter if it was a screen screenshot uh, or if it was a uh, an image taken with the camera so right here I'm gonna do this little grab text I can press and hold right here and then I can give this number a call instantly so this way you wouldn't have to copy and paste or you wouldn't have to write it down or refer you just hit on that little call button and you're good to go so this is just a way that you're simply able to grab text pretty much from any way that's on your screen if it's a picture or screenshot then you're able to put it in a document call or go to a website Super, super helpful. Next up, we're gonna talk about the notification types. So sometimes you might get a notification and you would like to go through and change how you want those notifications to come through. So for example, Google Messages, I open it up, here's the app information, I go to notifications, and then now you can select what and how you would like to be notified. So if you wanna have the badge, or if you don't wanna have the badge, if you wanna have a pop-up or not have a pop-up. So let's say in terms of Google Messages, you don't want anything on the lock screen and you don't care about the badge, Badge, but you do want to have your pop-up then you can have it set your way it's actually very very nice another way you can also access it is if you were to click on a little notification on the very top which I don't have one currently but it'll also take you directly into it let's say we go inside of YouTube so press and hold I'm gonna to go to the information and then through here notifications again if you don't want to have anything showed on the lock screen you just want to have the badge and then a pop-up you're able to do that so it's very nice to have your your opinions or your, your choices in terms of how you would like to have your applications given to you. Again, badge if you want it to be on lock screen or not, as well as a pop-up. Now we're going to head over into the security menu settings because the security menu has been updated as well. So let's say you scroll on down, you hit on security. So through here, you can see if there's things done or things that are not done. Uh, and then you can go into things super quick. So instead of you having to go through all of these different settings and menus and screens just to change a fingerprint or to check it out, you'd be able to go right through here. So when you take a look at your lock screen, do you have a lock screen type? And also, do you have fingerprints if you do do you want to add some in or do you want to make any changes your accounts it's going to take a look at the accounts that you have set up if you needed to add another one in here's your find my mobile so all the find my mobile details are right here so if you lose your phone you can track it you can see where it was you can remotely unlock it there's a lot of really cool things so if you look here and it has that red exclamation point i highly suggest going through and setting this up through your samsung account app security so this is just talking about if you have your device protection on or off same thing here if your google play protect is on or off scrolling on down you can take a look at the updates you can see which security update you have also same thing with the google play system update and you take a look at privacy then down here you have the rest of things as a part of security your biometrics your samsung pass secure folder private share and everything else. You can also take a look at other security options too. So this is just the updated newer version of security. And I think it's pretty nice. Uh, you can also scan things. You can take a look to see if there's something you need to do or not do. And this right here is talking about turn on device protection. So you can go right there and then you can protect your device if you want. So now let's head over inside of the camera. So one of the things that they did change is let's say that you go inside of maybe this more settings. So once you go inside of more and then you choose one of these options, the thing that is uh, a little annoying from the past is that you would have to hit back a couple times to go back to taking a normal photo. Here is your option right here. If you hit back, it's gonna take you directly over into taking photos again. So this way you don't have to go through a couple extra screens just to get back. Uh, the other thing you can also do is let's say you're inside of one of these extra modes. If you swipe back over here, it's gonna move you again right back over into photo. Even if you're inside of this little more option right here, if you're right there and you swipe back, it's gonna take you right back over into photo again. 
Another thing that was added in is if you go inside of Pro or even Pro Video, on the top right hand side, you'll have a histogram. So if you wanted to see, you know, if your, if your shot is too light, if it's too dark, you are able to tap on the little mountain image and it's going to show you the Instagram or the, the histogram on the very top. Now, I also want to go inside of the food mode because there was another thing or, or change or update inside of the food mode and that now allows you to do telephoto lens. So originally there was no telephoto lens when it came down to the food mode. You just have to move the height of your device and then now you do have that as an option. And then the other thing as well, and I like that, you see that I swipe back and it took me right back to photo. The other thing you can also do here too is you can simply just swipe right there. So you're able to change the, the uh, zoom on your phone with a simple swipe, makes it very simple, very easy, because normally what you would have to do is you would have to tap on this uh, and then maybe you would have to you know press and hold and then you would have to do your zoom that way. So now all you'd have to do is if you're in video, if you're in photo, doesn't matter, instead of you tapping or holding or doing anything, all you have to do is simply start swiping on that zoom options and it's going to go through and zoom for you. So they made it very simple and a little bit quicker for that action to be done. So now let's talk about digital well-being. So digital well-being has an update as well. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to take a look at digital well-being. This is something that I do like to use. So on the very top, it's going to show you everything that you have been using. You can tap this to get it expanded. You can take a look at individual applications as well. Here's the line. You can take a look at all of the days, what you've been doing, what you've been using and for how long. You can also have a screen time goal. So if you want to set a screen time, maybe to like only four hours in a day, then you're able to bring it down. Here's your app timers. I do have a bunch of timers on a bunch of different apps applications. So this way I don't overuse my device. Here's a driving monitor. So you can see how much you use your phone while driving. When you tap this, you can hit start and you can get it going. But basically it's monitoring your screen time while connected to your car's Bluetooth. So this way, again, you want to get off your phone if you're driving uh, and it's going to limit your screen time and you can monitor everything there. Same same thing with a uh, volume monitor. So monitor your volume level to make sure you're keeping your ears safe. Volume levels may be a little different depending on your headphones. Use Galaxy Buds to get the most accurate measurements. So you can go through and you can actually make small changes on the maximum volume output for your volume monitor, things like that. You also have your parental controls sitting right there. So if you wanna go through, make some parental controls for anybody in your family, you can make those changes just sitting from right here. And then focus mode could be something that you might be looking at inside of digital well-being. Focus mode should now be moved over into the Bixby routine. So that is where you can now find that. Another menu setting that has been changed and updated is, is the connected devices menu. So in here, you might see a couple new options or it's just kind of lined up differently. Here's your quick share. Here's your auto switch buds. So auto switch buds automatically switch your Galaxy Buds from another device to this phone when you make or answer a call, play media or talk to Bixby, both or other devices and this phone must be signed into the same Samsung account. So as long as you have a Samsung account, make sure everything is all paired up and synced up together. You're able to have an auto switch so this way maybe you're connected to a tablet and then also the cell phone all of the calls will automatically switch over into the phone and it's going to uh, activate with the buds and then when you're done with the phone call if you're watching a video on the tablet then it's going to auto switch back to your tablet as you're watching the video if someone else calls back it's going to auto switch for you to the phone uh, so that's how that will kind of work there you also have your call and text on other devices menu you have your continue apps on other devices link to windows samsung dex smart view smart things and android auto the color palette menu has been updated so in terms of the color palette this just gives you more options you can have up to 16 different colors and it all depends on your background so right now my background wallpaper is this right here it has greens and some grays blacks so when you go inside of color palette it's going to give you options uh, that'll work well for however you know whatever you have set up in the background so here's those greens and some grays you can swipe through all of these if you if you wanted to you know customize your phone you have different menus on the top showing you the different screens uh, and so as you scroll through you just find the one that works best for you. So let's say that I choose this option, I can hit on apply. Now going back inside of the color palette, if you didn't want to use any of these wallpaper colors, so again, it's being based off of the wallpaper that you have selected, you can actually use basic colors. So you can have a basic color if you want it to be an individual color, that's kind of being uh, the main color shown, or if you wanted to use two different colors. So if you wanted your phone to look like this, if you want it to look like this, again, it's, it's a way that you're able to just kind of customize your phone the way you want it to. So color palette just kind of gives you 
a additional options uh, when it comes down to colors or you can also use basic colors too. Now going back inside of the menu settings, we do have a newer update. Everything's kind of all meshed into one for the sounds and vibrations as well as intensity. So here's your sounds right here. So here's your ringtone sound, notifications, system, and volume. Then you have your vibration. So you can have what type of vibration is happening when you get a phone call or a text message system. And then here's your intensity. So for vibration intensity, this is the intensity that you can do all in one screen, talking about the system, the notification, notifications, the call, as well as media. And then inside of notifications, you can see which little tone I am using, the type of vibration pattern. And then through here, you can also change the intensity of that vibration. And it's all kind of meshed into one little area. Here's your call. So again, here's the call uh, tone that I chose with the call vibration intensity. So no matter which way you go, you can always make changes to either the tone the vibration pattern or the intensity, pretty much no matter which way you go through all of these different menus, which makes it again, super simple and easy. Uh, here's your vibration intensity that we talked about from before. Here's the system. So you can go through the system vibration intensity and you can have it on or off for all of these things here. So do you want a vibration intensity going on with charging, navigation gestures, dialing pad, the Samsung keyboard? So I did notice that I believe before this update, mine was probably sitting right around here for that keyboard intensity. When I brought it up a little bit more, you can really feel that haptic feedback when you're typing. I like it a little bit higher up here. Uh, so it is really nice that you're able to go through and you can make these changes, you know, uh, for all of these options with that vibration intensity. Now on the very top, you have all of these quick settings and some of the things that were added in inside of these quick settings buttons is gonna be things from accessibility. So sometimes if you wanted to make accessibility changes for a color inversion, high contrast text or high contrast font, you also have add color filter, color adjustment. You will now have options from accessibility that is now on the top that you're able to use as a quick menu option. You'd be able to add them in, you can rearrange them inside of here, however you would like, or you can also add Add it in here by hitting that plus button. You can bring it down again, move it into the order of where you want it to sit, but they were able to add in some accessibility options uh, inside of the quick menu settings. Another small change right over here is gonna be talking about that camera cutout. So the camera cutout was in a different location from before. So let's say that we scroll down into settings, we're gonna go inside of display. Underneath display, you're gonna see it right there. So originally these two were connected, they were merged together. You had full screen apps and you also had the camera cutout option there too. Uh, but this is where now they are split up. So you can go through and you can really kind of customize how you want. So if you wanna have your camera uh, show the cutout, you can, or if you wanna have the hide camera cutout it'll just kind of bring the game down a little bit so instead of their phone starting up here it's going to start here so again it'll hide that camera cutout so if you play this game do you want it to hide the camera cutout uh, do you want it to show the camera cutout or do you just want it to be on auto and then lastly we're going to talk about the edge panel so i do use edge panel a lot this one is the apps edge panel and sometimes you may not know exactly what the app is unless if it had a name below it you can now go inside of the edit button you go to the very top right hand side and you can now show app name. So this was not there from before. So if this will help you, uh, you know, decide what application it is, there is definitely some room in between these applications, even though I can add more in here, but there's enough room to show the name of the app. So you might as well leave it in there. If you don't want to have the name of the app, you want it to kind of look maybe a little bit more clean uh, and you know exactly what you know, every single application is just by the image, then you can leave it that way. So this was pretty much all of the top new features, the changes. I do know that there's a few additional things inside of the change log. A lot of the stuff that I didn't cover was, you know, the stickers and the AR emoji and the things like that. And sometimes most people don't really care about AR emoji or stickers or editing a GIF, things like that. I can cover that in a future video, but there was also a few things that I was trying to look for after the update that was listed in the change log that I was not able to find. Uh, that will maybe come with the next version too. They probably outlined everything. A couple things didn't make the first cut and then now it'll come later. So this is again, the top features that came with the Samsung Win UI 5.0 update with Android 13. Hopefully you guys appreciated the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe, subscribe in the very bottom left-hand side. And if you appreciate this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.